So as time's gone on, I have become more and more of an advocate for electric cars. I know, I know, you wouldn't think you'd hear me saying that based on my nuttiness for combustion engine vehicles, but EVs definitely have a place in society. And this is not our only car. I think that's important here because having an EV is one thing. If you've got one with really good range, you could probably have it as your only car. This one, however, the range isn't great. We primar primarily got this car for the morning commute. Um, and our morning commute back and forth to work is no more than 20 odd miles return journey. So it actually works. I also believe that in, you know, traffic or built up areas, an EV makes complete sense because there's no need to have a combustion engine car start, stop, polluting the environment. Although it is questionable as to how green EVs actually are. So I guess another question is, has it really worked for me or me and my wife? Because for those of you who've been subscribed to the channel, I released a video about, about eight months ago on the Audi e-tron uh, Sportback and I was raging, absolutely raging because the frustration at the time of the EV charging network was just, oh, it was infuriating. However, it has worked for us because we have got a wall box. We've got a pod point wall box, which eliminates the bulk of range anxiety. And especially because this car has a pretty small battery, it's a 36 kilowatt hour battery. Whilst it charges relatively quickly, its range isn't great. And that's where I think if you're gonna buy an electric car and you have the option of buying a car that's got good range, it means you have to charge it less. And obviously that seems really Billy basic maths, but, but hear me out here. Whilst the EV network has improved, definitely has improved, and where we're going now will be a testament to how much it's improved, but, this is the big but, many, many, many more people have now bought electric cars. So whilst the EV network may have increased and scaled up, <clears throat> the scale up of people buying EVs has gone up even more, which means you're still queuing for charging networks. And that still for me is a bit of a problem. It's still a problem for people who live in flats. You know, where are you charging your car? I'm extremely lucky and grateful that I've got a nice driveway with a house and a pod point attached to it. But not many people have that luxury. So there is still for me a little bit of a, I would say, <clears throat> There's still work to be done. <laughs> I guess the other part for me and my wife, with such a car with reduced range, I mean, look, full range on this, on paper is 130 miles. Realistically, we get about 108. It varies. In the winter, we get about 100. In the summer, it's probably around 115. But we have to be very conscious in where we go. Now, for us, it works because primarily this is a back and forth to work car with free charging at work, which we now need to queue for because everyone at work decided to get EVs. The furthest we've taken this has probably been Bista Village. Um, Bista Village, and we were lucky to get charging there. Otherwise, we would have had to have, on our way home, planned in a charge stop. So again, big places are increasing their network, which is helping. And actually, for us, that experience was pretty pleasurable, if I'm completely honest with you. No drama, there was charging available, happy days. Do I think EVs are the end game? I don't think so. I think EVs have a part to play in the end game, but I think there's still more to do. And I think that things such as biofuel, synthetic fuel, I'm not really sold on hydrogen, if I'm completely honest with you. Now, one of the things that I said in my last Living With video is the best supercharger network is of course the Tesla network. Well, here is a Tesla supercharger network. And some of you might be thinking, all right, Steph, well, why are you here? And recently, Tesla unlocked their supercharger network to non-EV cars. Sorry, non-EV, to non-Tesla vehicles, which is a game changer. However, not all of the supercharger network is um, open to all cars. There's only a certain few that are. This is one of them out near Reading. It's, the, it's the, probably the most local one to me. 
and I'm going to give it a whirl because it's the first time I'm using a supercharger network on this car. Hopefully it works. But what it does allow, <clears throat> and if, uh, if you go on the Tesla app, you basically, in order to do it, you download the Tesla app and you select your location. It will tell you the nearest superchargers. But there are a number of superchargers across France, across Spain, across the Netherlands. Um, there are a number of participating countries. So that means that a Euro trip with a proper decent supercharger network is now possible. It might be a stretch in this because there are chargers at the Euro tunnel which are unlocked to all EVs. So we are in. We are charging the Mini Electric with a Tesla supercharger. And as expected, no faff, no issues, no nothing. Just plug it in, use the app, start charging. Elon Musk knows how to do these things best. All of these work. It's, it's just, this is a pleasure. However, don't be deceived that you look at a supercharger and think, oh great, I can get a full, you know, 146 kilowatt hours of, um, of juice straight into the car because I think it's all dependent on how much your car can take and how limited the charging speed is because I'm seeing this and I'm charging at a rate of around about 50 kilowatt uh, hours per se, uh, 50 kilowatt hours. So I guess that's probably a limitation of the Mini Electric, whereas some of the cars with bigger batteries will charge much quicker as well and they can take on more charge. So we're already at 80%. Bear in mind, this is a small battery, so it's a 36 kilowatt hour battery. So really and truly, with a fast charge, it's gonna charge quickly anyway, but this last 20% will probably take a bit longer. Although we are, we are rising rapidly, which is good. However, one of the things that I would say is that supercharger networks are great, but, the charging cost is more expensive. So our tariff uh, at home costs us around about 24 pence per kilowatt hour. You can join the Tesla membership club, which gives you a, a better rate. However, I can't be sure for certain, but I'll, I'll show it here. I think right now I'm not a member. It costs £10.99 a month to join the Tesla membership for non-Tesla EV charge cars. Uh, and I think you pay 48 pence per kilowatt hour. So it's almost double in this charging uh, supercharger network. And if you are not a member, which I'm not, I think I'm paying 61 pence per kilowatt hour. So the supercharger networks is great for being out on your travels. It's still cheaper for me to charge at home. <laughs> And one of the things that I have noticed as well is that, yes, we've all seen price hikes in our energy bills, which is just a thing across the UK, but I've not really seen a huge amount of increase to my own personal energy bill. Yes, it's gone up slightly, <clears throat> but not drastically. And where really and truly where I'm saving money in the fuel station, um, I'm saving, well, where I'm saving money in the fuel station, I'm adding it to the electricity bill. However, just to put it into perspective, uh, here's a month, I think it's April, I think we spent, I can't remember, it'll be here, around 20, 30 quid, uh, and that's charging the car around about seven times in that month. Granted, we use the uh, free charging at work, but um, if I was to run the maths, and bear in mind it costs me 81 quid to fill up my mini uh, petrol combustion engine mini, to run this car, if we do the maths, I'm going to put it up on the screen, it will save me a pretty, it will save me a decent chunk of change, which I can use for like a holiday. So again, an advocate EVs for day-to-day -day use, but I would still rather have a nice combustion car to go and enjoy the weekends with. There we go. We've just done 85% because the last part would take a bit longer. And I really just did this bit for demonstrational purposes. But yeah, this is, um, this is definitely a plus point, guys. And one of the things that was my biggest gripe uh, when I did the Audi video and living with an EV was exactly that is supercharger networks are unreliable, but as expected, Tesla supercharger network, you're winning. But that said, you know, supercharger networks are growing. So are the rate of drivers uh, buying EV cars. So I think we still got a while to go, but in terms of adoption, I think me and my wife have absolutely adopted EVs for the day-to-day -day commute. Um, would I personally go and buy an EV? Not yet, not yet. I think having one EV in the family is is enough. I'm still, I've still got a lot of cars, combustion engine cars that I wanna get out my system before uh, I buy myself an EV, which obviously is gonna be inevitable. But in summary, having an EV has saved me so much money, genuinely, so much money. With the price of fuel, as mentioned earlier on, and just the way this, crazy cost of living crisis has gone. It's given us flexibility in our wallet 
to be able to enjoy that money that we would have thrown away on, on fuel bill into something else and in our case it's going towards a holiday or a road trip to the south of france in september which i will be doing i haven't decided what car to do it in yet but i'll be doing that soon